It's December the 5th. 6th. I smurfed it up already. 2015. I'm Dana Durnford, also known as the Nuclear Proctologist.org. And you can find my videos in Fukushima presentations live throughout the entire internet. So nuclear is carbon free will be the subject today. And as that subject plays out, you'll see that nuclear is the furthest thing from carbon free. And nuclear has actually killed the Pacific Ocean. And we are waiting for the guy to stop playing that guitar. Hey, buddy! Hey, give it up for the young fella in the... Who knows how good that came out. I just whacked that together before we went live, so... <sighs> we're almost through it. Anyway, I guess we're through it. We finished it out. Should have worn my headphones, but I'm having problems again, so... We'll move on. Nuclear is carbon free. Hi, everybody. You want some blues? <laughs> you can't handle the blues. <laughs> well, if you want some blues, that's still playing in the background. Sorry. It takes a minute. It takes about five minutes to get these streams up and running. <laughs> so it's okay to be a bit goofy while we're waiting. There's your blues. That blue sounds better, don't it? Okay, we'll do good blues for tomorrow. That's my original, by the way. There you go. I hope I made it. Happy! Now, that's happier than anybody who lives on the Pacific Rim Nations, on the Pacific Ocean, and the Pacific Coastline, the British Columbia in particular, America, China, Vietnam, Philippines, Japan have all suffered a devastating blow that has been hit away from us. And I'm Dana Durnford, also known as the nuclearproctologist.org, and you can find these live streams so far seven days a week, usually hopefully only six, but who knows, 10.30 a.m. Pacific Canada time, never early, never late. All you do is go to Livestream.com, type in Dana Durnford, and you'll see that picture showing up for you. Yeah? Yeah. And so the Pacific Ocean is missing the major species, the most important species. They're gone. They're gone. The phytoplankton, the krill, anchovies, sardines, squid, herring, salmon. Just That's just the major migratory feeders. That's the ones that are converting the phytoplankton and the krill into the energy that we're familiar with. Like barbecues and restaurants and industry. And so that now has all failed year after year since Fukushima. Devastating, devastating, unimaginably devastating comparisons. Chernobyl and Fukushima, the, the comparisons will cover that in a little tiny bit. And no. <laughs> Rewind. So urchins could be the next sea star wasting victims. Uh, how did I smurf that up? Nobody knows for sure. Let's keep going. <coughs> and so, 2015, Smithsonian picked up the National Geographic report. So far, urchin die-off have been observed and documented four sites along 200 miles of the coastline and a fifth site off California. The Guardian, Vidal had said, look at the third sentence for the next 10 days, 400 Hiroshima bombs worth of radioactivity across 150,000 square miles. To put that into context, 
Uh, Chernobyl lasted 10 days and the reactor was one third the size of any of the reactors at Fukushima and Chernobyl was a 30% meltdown. Chernobyl over a million dead according uh, to 3,500 translated Ukrainian studies. Kofi Anna said in 2002 there was 3 million children permanent disabilities because of Chernobyl. Chernobyl, they abandoned the homes. Chernobyl, they were only using graphite. Fukushima was MOX fuel. Contaminated the EU from Fukushima or Chernobyl. Chernobyl, of course, only lasted 10 days. And Chernobyl, they located the core, and we'll show you that in a little tiny bit. Fukushima never stopped. Fukushima, four full meltdowns. Fukushima, allegedly nobody died. Fukushima, you get a free home if you're pregnant in the decontamination zone. Fukushima, they were using mixed oxide of fuel. We'll cover that in a bit. Fukushima has killed the Pacific, and that's what this video is about. And Fukushima, of course, is not carbon free, and nobody knows where the cores are. Well, we kind of know, and we'll talk about that in a little tiny bit. Yeah? Yeah. So, let's come over and say hi to everybody. I got to get rid of that extra stream we got there. And that only takes a second because it's chewing up bandwidth. And so we don't want it to stutter on your end. You be dooby dooby. Here we go. Hey, boom. Bye bye resource. Uh uh. Bandwidth. Think we're gonna stream. Hi Sylvia. Shani Ken. Strontium Mike. Ding ding. James Lee. Jim. Oh, Aquarius Charms. And Shani Ken is Elaine. And anybody that I'm missing? We want to cover David from a couple of days ago. Terry Ann. And we owe David an apology. And we are going to give him that. And he wrote me a sincere letter. And he's heartbroken. And now, there's two sides to look at this. Hi, everybody. So we are streaming live. And let me come back to me for a second. And so David put names in there that on my chat room a couple of days ago um, that there's no reason to put those names on my site. I'm charged with criminal harassment and that the trolls out there have been doing this to me. That was cited in the disclosure that, uh, that the people in the comment room were parroting my opinion, but it's not my opinion. You can go through the internet and look up Woods Hole or U University of Victoria uh, spokespeople, and what you'll find out is that people have been attacking them long before I even showed up. So much more vile things to them. And I'm charged with criminal harassment of nuclear PR lapdogs, mass murderers, in every sense of the word. Um, but the media, I'm charged with criminal harassment, not uttering death threats. Big difference. Huge difference. But anyway, back to David. And David feels that he's been treated and he kind of understands it but he feels that he's been treated unjustly so we apologize to David and that if he did not do anything wrong and that that was taken out of context um, I can't change that I wish I could and I can I can't bring back any emotions that you went through either and change that and I can't change what that might have impacted you or done to your life or, or your friends or your families or your loved ones or anybody on the internet who was friends with you and uh, if that is what happened, there's nothing I can say to console you, I'm sure, outside of the fact that, you know, I don't want to put you in that category as a casualty of war. But unfortunately, I do. And I will, of course, I'm, and I have no options but to. Because that is what I am up against. They are going to war against me. Uh, the industry is going to war against me, had me arrested and smeared me across Canada. Now, immediately after that, somebody named Dave showed up on my YouTube channel and just wrecked my site. They used major amounts of ghost counts, and it was easy to say that the Dave here that was out of it, that was my opinion, because we've seen that happen many times before. But sometimes the innocent gets taken into that thing. But anybody that does put those names on my site after watching my videos are a suspect. And I can never change that, see? And so my apologies. There's not much I can do. 
it's done. And that's the casualties of war. We'll see many of those people, and we already have, and I'm sure, right? And many people I've blocked and contacted me of unblocked them. Not for her. Lonnie was one of those people years a couple of years ago. And Lonnie's after doing radio shows now about Fukushima and nuclear. And so I unblocked her because she reached out to me. And so there are many examples in the past where I have uh, offended people or taken people out of context. But I, I'm under a constant attack. I'm, I got criminal charges against me, against something that, for, and then I've been smeared throughout North America, saying uh, charged with death threats by the biggest media in Canada in the last couple of weeks. <laughs> so I've been smeared myself. I know what it feels like throughout the country. And so we're, uh, Friday we were talking, I was talking with a lawyer about lawsuits, about death for the Globe and Mail anyway, and a retraction immediately to be launched before my first court date on December the 16th. We're going to take them apart. They're getting taken apart. And there's not going to be no mercy on my side. Because I talked to the Globe and Mail before they put the article out. They, they, they contacted me through email and said, they just watched my video, said he knew I was only charged with criminal harassment, not uttering death threats, yet that was the headline to put in the paper across Canada. And they were aggregated by 1,600 medias throughout Canada. And I don't have anybody to defend me because people don't know the, the minutiae, the details of the details because the court orders are court orders and I can't, this is not for public. A lot of this is not for public. And so that's why I can't talk about, and I can only allude to certain aspects of that. But they're doing that because uh, we went out, we went out on the Pacific Ocean. And let me fix that. <coughs> Dina. <coughs> Hang on. Hang on, we'll get it. I'll get it. There you go. See? I keep my word, yeah? Oh, I done it. Did it. I done it even better. Look, he did it. I did it, done it, done it, did it. <laughs> keep going. So all the girls you see are Dana and the Hounds of Fukushima. And we took this operation for 260 days, up to five months without coming home. And we took 200,000 pictures. Look at it. Now that same spot pre-Fukushima looked like that. That same spot pre-Fukushima looked like that. That same spot right now looks like that. And when you go short, it looks like that. It doesn't look like that. It doesn't look like that. It looks like that. And we can say that because we done the entire coastline for 260 days, 15,000 miles. So we kind of carry that unique perspective that we are the only people out there that done that. We went in, while we done with something innocent, we took pictures. We documented an area that's well known for how many species are supposed to be there. And there's supposed to be a minimum of 5,600 species. And they're not there throughout the whole coastline. Right? Do you get it? Hang on. Hang on, we're far from finished. Oh, uh, sea star dies, no worries about the urchins. Yeah? And because of four spots and a fifth spot, they declared a mass mortality, we done the whole coastline. And I was arrested and jailed. And then I was demonized and vilified and victimized throughout the entire country through 1,600 medias. I was contacted by CBC, the biggest, the Canadian government. I done two 20-minute interviews with people around me listening to me. And they didn't even quote me, yet I was vilified. The Japanese Times removed my comment when I tried to defend myself against their smear. When I tried to, all I said was, I wasn't charged with death threats or uttering death threats. I was charged with criminal harassment of nuclear pukes. And they removed the comment and blocked me at the Jap Japan Times on my own article. I contacted the editor and they didn't reply. I contacted uh, producers there and they didn't reply. I contacted staff there and they didn't reply. I screen captured everything and I have it in a folder for the judge to look at. At the same time, I'm launching criminal charges and civil lawsuits against all the parties that cooked this up. Judges, prosecutors, lawyers, police officers. And it's battle time. 
and I need your support. And if I don't get it, I'm still going to do it. I'm still going to battle. I don't feel I'm going to battle by myself, but sometimes I do. Because he demonized me throughout the country and I lost pretty well all the funding that I was counting on to carry me through this. And But do you see me backing off? Do you see me stopping? Do you see me cowering? No. Because I showed an extinction event. And so the, the nuclear carbon free, let's cover that a little bit more. Because this can get pretty wild <laughs> when you're playing around with the big boys. Nuclear carbon, carbon free, nuclear free. Who are these people? Projects, carbon free. Uh, let's scroll down a bit. Truth out, carbon free nuclear economy is inevitable. How is nuclear free energy? Look what it's done to the Pacific Ocean. Killing all that life is nothing but carbon, yeah? Nuclear matter is calling it carbon free. Popular assistance, car, car, hang on, we'll find some environmental research. How free, how carbon free is nuclear? How much carbon dioxide? Certainly the power plants do not generate carbon dioxide, but there's an indirect, so there might be telling you the truth there. But you can see, all I'm trying to show you is this myth. You know, like any nuclear notes. Um, where's their site? This is their blog. So they're supposed to look like just some average blogger and it's carbon-free, carbon-free, carbon-free. As you scroll through this, they're pumping that out, carbon-free, carbon-free. Everything is carbon-free. If you go to their site and look around, their whole chummy is carbon-free. Hang on. I smurfed up what I was supposed to do. I was looking for their search engine. Now I can't find it. Yeah, carbon-free. Hang on. Carbon free, probably won't find nothing. Going nuclear in Washington, Utah, population. So everything, every other sentence they usually utter is carbon free. If you go over to their, if I can find it, who cares? But carbon free, but ban nuclear reactor. Germany bans nuclear power. Nuclear power phrase out. Should nuclear power uh, be banned globally? But a lot of these are pro-arguments, pro-blogs, because they're up in that first search engine, yeah? Carbon-free nuclear, nuclear matters, you know? Think about that one. Uh, global offers, uh, energies, nuclear matters again. Nature.com, uh, nuclear energy assessing the emissions, carbon-free lunch for any energy source. Well, you know what? Nature is going to go, they're going to, Suck their bum is what they're going to do. But not free of unease. This is New York Times. Nuclear, carbon free, but not free of unease. You just kill the Pacific Ocean. You just kill the Pacific Ocean. It's dead. And, but yet they're out there now at the Climate Paris talks. Hi, everybody. They're out there right now at the Climate Paris talks. Okay, now let's get into the show. Let's get into that show. And we got so much to get through. But think about the fallout from Japan based upon a couple of elements. We're going to shoot ahead on this. This is a 40 day model. It's not playing, that's why. This is a 40 day model. Let's start it off again. That's a 40 day model based upon two elements. And so we're going to flick through these reactors really quick. So why is that model like that? Well, that carbon free nuclear known as Japan, had a 9.0 earthquake and had a tsunami run through the whole country. Tsunami took out the power for all the nuclear power plants. So even if it didn't damage the power plants, they would have melted down in a couple of hours because there was no power. And so we know there was no power anyway because the, the tsunami ran through it. Not only that, but because it detonated. Not only that, because we've seen what the buildings look like. Not only that, because we know they melted down. Not only that, because when you look at the buildings, we know that that's the game over. A Chernobyl is a candlestick compared to anything you're looking at. And that's all four reactors you just saw. We know they ran out and then they faked stories about nuclear. They said inside of that was that. They said inside of that, it looks like that. They said inside of that, it looks like that and looks like that. And inside of that. But we know that they never got no power throughout the country because the whole country looks like that. We know they had massive... Massive releases because they're digging up the whole country and putting it in bags. 
We know it comes over here in 45 days because we know the jet streams are real. We know that. And we know that shouldn't... Okay. So, I just ran through that leg at a split. 92 with Dana. Thank you very much. You have a nice day, Dana. That's all we needed. Dana. Oh, we got it now. We get it. No, you don't. You don't because you are up against real gangsters. Okay, sorry. Real gangsters. I know he's there somewhere. Okay, we'll just use these guys. You're not telling me they don't look like gangsters. These gangsters are taking pictures and showing you the homeless. They're dead. Whoever that is, they're dead. And the reason I'm telling you that is because that doesn't exist in that. See? And so they faked everything. They killed the homeless. We know that. They're burning water in there. And they're not talking about plutonium. They're only talking about cesium. How can you have that thing there inside of that thing there? How does that work? Somebody want to explain that to me? When we know they're all like, all four reactors are like that. And we know what that is doing to our planet. We know that because they couldn't get power to any of the nuclear plants for, like if you don't get a million gallons a minute, it's done. And so the majority of the plants that were devastated, like you see here in that, that whole coastline, just think about this. The, 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 it never came in and hit the Diachi nuclear power plant. Just because that's all you heard about, that doesn't mean that's all that's going on. That don't mean that's the only nuclear power plant that melted down. They couldn't get power to any of them. That's what he had. Power plants are dependent upon external power. Hang on. So, imagine trying to get the battery out of the car, let alone power to something else. Imagine you dug up the whole country because the radiation is everywhere. Imagine that this model is only based upon a single release from a single reactor. It's not based upon all the reactors I just showed you. Imagine that the top of the reactor, these reactors will lose an inch a minute if they don't get power. And so it only takes around 11 hours because they generate so much heat. And we know that the EPA come out and said no harmful radiation could reach uh, North America, right? We know that. That's okay. But let me, let me talk about that for a second. Because that's what we're here to do today, is we're here to talk about an Australian forecast. Uh, March the 15th. That was an animation that came out. Hang on. In case of emergency... Running shows. Yeah, because the forecast meant that the entire plant itself would now had to be abandoned, and they did. Latest forecast is all of Japan or California on a radiation threat April 6th. Who is it? Norwegian Institute for Air Research. Okay. Look at that. I'm going to show you that video in a little tiny bit. But the EPA says... There is no harmful emissions, right? So why did the chicken cross the road? Because North Korea's long-range missiles can't reach that far. Well, that's kind of the same thing about them not telling you about this and claiming that it can't reach here when it certainly can. Not that North Korea is going to attack anybody. They got every country on the planet can just is already surrounded. And they just bomb them from the sky till they're gone. It's stupid. Cesium-137 forecast, forecast shows a high-altitude radiation cloud concentrating over California. That's your red. The Royce Institute. Oh, do you think that nuclear might have something to do with climate change? You'll be right. Do you think that nuclear is going to destroy the climate? You'll be right. Do you think that uh, nuclear has killed the Pacific Ocean? Positively. We already proved it, and we showed you that earlier in the stream. Cesium-137 plume. Now, don't forget there's 2,000 radioactive isotopes that are coming at the same time. No one bothers mentioning. But here's France model. Are they lying? Is France lying too? Yeah? How about a Norwegian Institute in May the 12th, the end public forecast as a large radiation cloud was stretching right from the Pacific, from Japan, all the way across the ocean to North America, the entire distance. But it's okay, Dana. 
No, Dana, it's all right. It's just nuclear, Dana. Is this what these people see when they look in the mirror? Do I need a mirror to see that in them? Do you need a mirror to see the lie? Do you need a mirror to see what, that you're, what you're denying yourself? See, when I look in the mirror, I don't see myself like that. But when they look in the mirror, they do. When they look in the mirror, that's all they can see is the fact that the world will despise them till the end of time, that the world will, will cross the road when they see them, that the world has, has no way to ignore them in the near future because they're the ones that the entire society are going to be lashing out at is all the apologists we see in the blogs and in the media and in the chat rooms. Because the dead Pacific Ocean is not something somebody can just ignore. It's not something that's going to go away. It's not something you can sweep under a carpet. It's not something you can turn your back on. It's not something that doesn't impact you. It's not something that won't haunt you till the end of time That if you don't try your best to do something for this whole planet. So, do you think because I don't come from Woods Hole or from Uvic and that I covered 15,000 miles of coast in 260 days and that we've done it at a very calm pace and that we show that life like this no longer exists and that everywhere you go it, it's looking like that or it's got a few algaes. It's got less than 100 species out of the 5,600 species throughout the entire coastline. And that those species are not healthy. They can't survive. They're not reproducing. They're almost all babies trying to, trying to reestablish a foothold. Because the ocean used to be a super life of, of a billion creatures in a glass of water. And so if all the species disappeared off the shoreline, the indigenous population, and so the 5,600 I talk about are just the residential, the highly visible. There's an extra 1,800 in Barkley Sound but when I was out there on that expedition, I only found 12 species. But there's supposed to be another 6,500 species there of the invertebrates with the backbones, little crustaceans, like they look like little shrimp. But they're individual species recognized as the... But there's 4 million species plus extra in the Pacific Ocean, but there was no room there for them. Because the residential species took up all the, all the land. And so if they disappeared, and they did, because we went out and showed that, that carbon-free nuclear is killing the Pacific Ocean, we proved that. I got arrested for doing that. And then demonized for doing that. And vilified for doing that. Attacked relentlessly for doing that. And I can't defend myself. I can't come out and say the things that need to be said about the people that have me charge, because... Who knows what they'll do next to me? And, and it's illegal for me to do it because they have all these restrictions. And they don't want me to be able to do it for at least three years after they're finished with me. Be able to talk about two individuals. Think about that. Anybody else can talk about them and do. All the time because they're the two major spokespeople for North America. But I'm not allowed to criticize them. Do you got any idea how difficult it is just to do what I'm doing here right now without crossing any line that the 12 restrictions they got against me. You got any idea how much stress goes with what I'm doing? Do you got any idea how much stress it was to spend 260 days on that going through the coastline and I wouldn't come back but I didn't have the money to keep going and so we built the whole operation as we went and completed the task and we have it up at the nuclear proctologist. But you've got no idea what it took to do that. You can't even imagine. I can't even explain it. To finish the job. To get the entire coastline proof that it's all gone. We didn't know that when we went. We covered thousands of headlines before we went on the ocean. We flushed it out well. And then we launched the expeditions, five of them. And so carbon-free nuclear has killed the Pacific Ocean. The coastline is kept warm all year long by the direct warm waters from Japan. The ocean currents travel. The ocean currents, and hang on a second. 
we got a lot to cover yet, so we got to get moving. The ocean currents traveling at five miles per hour crosses the Pacific Ocean in 45 days. 24 hours a day, five miles an hour, times 45 days. Five times 24 times 45. And that's just Canada I'm talking about. But the rain is bringing it beforehand. The rain, the jet streams brought it long before the rain did. And so the jet streams, um, it hit Iceland in seven days. So the Atlantic coast, you can see, everything on the east side of the Rockies went towards the Atlantic, and everything on the west side of the Rockies washed back down towards the coastline. So all the estuaries and rivers and lakes, everything else. Now we know, we know the jet streams are real. We got oodles of models of this. We already showed you all the institutions. Let's show you some more modeling from other places of the radioactive fallout. Right? Look at this guy. This is Noah's model, America's model. So that's why the Pacific Ocean is dead. It's because that never stopped going out and it might never stop because we only send in the homeless and that they're burning it in the incinerators and, and sending more our way. This is only a couple, all these models are just a couple of days releases from a single reactor. That's enough atoms to kill everything on the planet if you can distribute it out to everything on the planet. Just in the model that they're showing you. But they never showed you the meltdowns in the model, but I showed you the reactors. I show, I'll show you more documentation coming up in a few minutes. We'll jump back and forth. So this is, just takes a couple of days. Look at the dates on it. If you can see it, the 25th, March the 25th. That's where the model stopped at, look. And so the entire North America, but Canada went out and done the same thing. Right, Canada, evidence of sharp features. There's the criminals. They couldn't, they couldn't tell you, allegedly, they were throttled by the government, but that's not good enough. That's not, that's not acceptable. They should have went to jail. They should have stood their ground. We would have got them out. They would have been the right party for telling everybody that they went out and found the radioactive particles had flooded Canada during school hours when the kids were walking to school. They went up and down the coastline for 18 hours. They knew the kids were walking to school and they knew that they were breathing in those hot particles and playing in it. They never told them to get out of the way. They should have went to jail. They should have come out and spoke. Hey, that was their job. That's why we hired them. That's why we gave them the money, the authority, and everything else. And they were, they were throttled allegedly by Harper, by the government. That's not good enough. But, I sh but if that's true, then Harper should be in jail too, right? We will leave no stones, no stones unturned in the future to prosecute these people that betrayed us. There will be no stones left unturned. It, and it probably won't even be me involved in it. Everybody else is going to come looking for you. Rain simulating regions used during Chernobyl to protect Moscow from fallout. That's Chernobyl. One third the size, 30% meltdown, stopped after 10 days. 600 pilots died. They were using graphite. So Chernobyl stopped after 10 days. It was equal to 400 Hiroshima bombs, like I showed you earlier. Fukushima never stopped. Chernobyl was one third the size of any of the reactors in Japan. CNN says 25th of 2012, no answer why so many kids are born outside the exclusion zone in Fukushima are sick after a meltdown, but Fukushima was only 7% bad as Chernobyl. But we know Chernobyl stopped after 10 days. We know Fukushima didn't stop. We know Chernobyl was one third the size. We know Fukushima had four full meltdowns. We know over a million died from Chernobyl, and we know CNN and everybody else said none died from but we know seven died on a single street. Seven died on a single street. Believe it. <laughs> Keep going. They went and they sprayed regions over Chernobyl. They're still doing it. But over 700 heli 600 helicopter po uh, pilots flew sorties in there and dropped boric acid and lead. They all died, every one of them. Remember me showing you that? Those clips from Harvard talking about that? I'll bring it up again. 
<clears throat> some, I'll, I'll, I'll import it. Like you see, I'm back to importing all my stuff. <laughs> Let's keep going anyway. But they didn't do that over Fukushima. Huh? Yeah. How come? Because they didn't want all those helicopter pilots dying, did they? That would give the game away. They were already in cover-up mode. But, you know, they allude that it would be like Chernobyl on steroid if the spent fuel catches fire. Okay. Okay. Now we're getting somewhere. Now we're talking. Now we're having a conversation. Hey, what do you think that is? Huh? The spent fuel pools were up close to the roof. And those designs. In the Mach 4, right? So they're gone. That's what he rolled out and showed you that. And, and that. And claimed that it was inside of that. <laughs> you getting it yet? Pretty slick, eh? Pretty, pretty slick how they deceived everybody and manipulated everybody. But unfortunately, Dana and the Hounds of Fukushima went out and done the whole coastline. Now we have documentation that we had an extinction event. And that the four million other species didn't receive the coastline. And that you better get your asses in gear that this is not a game. And that you didn't demonize me and arrest me and marginalize me because of words. They done it because of the, what I show and what I prove. Let's keep going. Who knows where we're to next? Try that one more time. Let's try it again. I'm kicking st shit too much here. Hang on. So that's, that's the equipment from Chernobyl. In Fukushima, there's no fields like that because they're selling it off to you and bringing it over here and sending it over there, right? That's why you're not seeing big fields of that equipment. Because they've used a lot more than that, I can assure you, that's contaminated. No, no, no big fields for Fukushima. Just for the bags, right? <laughs> Just for the bags, Dana. We don't want to tell them about anything, right? Is that, is that how the game is played? Because there's bags like this throughout the country, but for some reason, they're not going to show you the other side of it, right? No. I wonder why. Eye opener. Under 3% of the children exposed to Chernobyl radiation, one third the size, 30% meltdown, stopped after 10 days. Chernobyl, they abandoned the houses. You get free homes in the exclusion zone if you're pregnant. But we got some twisted people. In Chernobyl, it turned into an elephant foot after 10 days. That's what they call it anyway. Fukushima, they got no idea where it's to. Three million children required treatment because of Chernobyl. Three million. Permanent disabilities. Many will die prematurely. That's 2,000, right? Or I always say, okay, let's keep going. This is one of the photographers. He's already lost uh, one of his limbs. He died, he died about six weeks later. And they buried his cameras with him because they were too radiated. They buried him too in a special coffin. Uh, radiation limb is too high after Fukushima. Now Belarus, I want you to remember that word coming up. Japan allowed 20 times more cesium in drinking water than Chernobyl. But Belarus, foreign minister in I think that was um, in 1995, said the birth rate had fallen by half as a result of Chernobyl. We've seen that in animal studies too, right? Chernobyl, they conscripted 600,000 soldiers. And Chernobyl raided the equipment and tools and everything else. Chernobyl, they made their own um, lead vest. They ran, these guys were running out on a, on, on a roof They were running out on a roof uh, for 15 to 30 seconds and then they went home. In Fukushima, they're sending in the homeless, people who don't speak the language, immigrants, the destitute, migrants, day workers. Like when it comes to humanity, they lost the plot completely. Average person in Seattle, hang on, we'll push me over there a little tiny bit, there you go. Average person in Seattle breathed in 10 hot radioactive particles a day. Okay. So on the countdowner, that means even if you only breathe in one, 
is 5, 10, 15, 20, 25 years down the road, they're going to get a cancer. Now, but there's 1,800 autoimmune deficiencies now will show up before that cancer because of that isotope that's in their body. But that's not 10 hot particles. I'm just talking about one. And everything out of Fukushima was one. Carbon-free nuclear for you. How much does it cost to treat a cancer patient? Let's put all that into the equation. How much for the transportation? How much money did they lose on the li by liquidating their assets? <laughs> How much gas does cancer patient burns on the way to the hospital? <laughs> How carbon-free is that? <laughs> then they're going to give them radioactive isotopes. 2% of the chemotherapy patients live longer than they would have if they didn't get it, allegedly. Nobody knows for sure. The law is endless. It's in every aspect of your life. It's in your fire detectors. And your child gets and plays with that, they'll get a cancer 20 years down the road. You have no way. Time doesn't allow you to remember those details, you know? Oh, Timmy was playing with the smoke detector when he was three. He's 27 now. That, you don't suppose, Doc? What? You can remember that? <laughs> yeah, I remember. Play his day. No, you don't. No, you won't. No, you didn't. Hugs. Okay. So look, look at the Canadian drinking water standards. Look at the natural stuff. 0.5 becquels. When it comes to natural uranium, they can't even get a becquel out of it. They call it milligrams. <laughs> That's how harmless it is. See, naturally, because your body is adapted to it anyway. Lead is the same way. 0.2 becquels a liter. Natural radiation, radium. Um, 0.05 a becquel a liter. You got it in a liter, you put it up to your lips, it's long gone. It only lasts one ten thousandth of a second. The stuff in the artificial radionuclides, that sequesters in your organs for 120 years. The strontium's there for 300. The iodine-129 is there for 15 million. And there's 31 times more than it was iodine-131. That's the big joke in the nuclear lunchroom. And cesium-137, 10 becquels. So every time you drink a liter, you got 10 more becquels sequestered into your organs. Now your body is flooding itself with white blood cells. You're feeling lazy, you're feeling disoriented. And as, as you bioaccumulate more and more, every time you get a bat, every time you get a shower, every time you drink something, every time you eat something, and there's no one trying to solve any of the riddles. No one's trying to come up with a way around it. No one's even looking for it because they said, fuck it, we're just going to change it. We still want the money. We still want the authority. We still want the, the, the awards, the accolades. We just don't want anybody to know what Dana's saying. So let's arrest the fucker. Let's get him out of there. Who cares? It's just one guy. Let's arrest him. He's fucking everything up. We're not going to have any pensions. 7,000 Beckwells in a liter. So when you get in your hot tub, that's 7 million Beckwells. Morons. You better support me. You better start helping me. You better start making me strong enough to take these people on. You better start making me putting me into a position where I can defend myself. Because right now, they have destroyed me. Oh, by the way, we raised 750 bucks all together towards talk show. <laughs> Old trouble and me, we've been all over town. Wait till I get my hands on that. I'm going to take them down. It's called a... Woo Dana's bookmarks. <laughs> Hang on. Talk show. I got so much on my computer. I might never find what I want. There it is. Talk show. I got to bring that up. Let's get rid of the other stuff for a second. Yoink. You might get a little blumpy. We're trying to raise enough money for talk show. You can donate at the nuclear proctologist.org. Uh, we need $4,995 to deliver to my door. And we got seven fifty so far, so we're really excited. We're well on our way. Uh, what this is, this clarifies the picture. It gives you amazing sound. And now I can do all kinds of interviews. And we can destroy their narrative permanently. And you can phone in. And you'll have... Uh, It'll correct your frame rate for you when you phone in. It'll enhance all your colors. It'll Adobe your audio. And it's all in one platform, plug and play, no advertisements. You got preferred, um, 
You got a high speed route because you're considered a preferred customer on Skype. Blah, 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 blah. And so come over and say hi to everybody at the same time. Carbon free nuclear just killed the Pacific. Hi, Chuck. Shani Ken. Sylvia. Jim. James Candace. Amterse is out there. There she is. Missed you yesterday. Terry Ann. And then Nani's saying hi. Who happens to be here? Elaine was saying how her son got a couple of parking tickets. $245 a pop. In New York City. Trying to get his cancer treatments. He died. Um, I'm not sure. But it wasn't that long after. I know. And he suffered. And But I mean. that That's how the industry is. Right? That's just how that industry works. Um, ice cream, you scream, everybody. James Lee. Let's come back to the show. You gotta watch me. But anyway, that talk show, you can donate at the Nuclear Proctologist with credit cards org, and you can donate at PayPal. Type in Dana Durnford at Hotmail.com. And so we need to get our hands on that talk show. So we can do Skype professionally. And so we have extraordinary quality. Let's keep going. We're running out of time. 11.17 again. Damn. Where does that time go anyway? Just like boom. Okay. We left off on the nuclear clock. Oh yeah, we left on the water. Unprecedented. 1,500 atoms of radioactive sulfur per meter. You remember those models I was showing you? Okay, it's like stay on track. So think about uh, peer review studies January 2011, a smoke injection height from fires in North America. That was a Harvard study. So those, those uh, particles that I'm talking about here, they're much bigger than the atoms. <laughs> they're like 10,000 times. But yet those particles can cross oceans, right? But the nuclear, no, no, your shoe's untied. No, no, nuclear can't do that. Why are you talking about nuclear? You're not, you're not a nuclear scientist. Why don't you shut up? You don't know nothing. Well, how about this study here showing about how pollution comes over? 2004, transboundary pollution influences on aerosol concentrations, right? How it crosses from Asia over to North America. No, Dana, nuclear can't do it, Dana. So I'm smoking a cigarette. It's called CNT. It doesn't have 7,000 chemicals. It doesn't have 7,000 chemicals. Your average cigarette has 7,000 chemicals. Mine is just nicotine. And so if you can't deal with that, make a video and explain why. And send it to I don't give a fuck dot org. <laughs> Way to get a dialect happening, Dana. Yeah. Hang on. Yeah. <laughs> Hang on. I gotta see if I can blow that Fort Ringing air going there. Right now. See it? I done one. It was just like his rings. It was just like his rings. I gotta get my rewind button up and running so we can see that. I got a rewind button on this one of um an instant replay. Haven't worked it out yet, but it's coming. <laughs> so is Fukushima. It's coming. Make no mistake about it. It's coming at your higher court. Fukushima, anybody not familiar? Been living in a cave for the last four and a half years with no electronics. You have four melter reactors. You got four melter reactors. What have I got done to everybody now? Dana, get your act together. Christ's sakes. Try to look professional at least while you're smoking. <laughs> Mine ain't got the 7,000 chemicals in it. Don't have a stroke. Okay, have a stroke if you want to. It's probably the cesium. Blame it on the cesium. Okay, think about aerosol optical thickness. Thickness. Approximate location of the Asian dust cloud. Oh, dust is like 10,000 times bigger than the radioactive atoms coming out of Fukushima that we're talking about. 
But they can make it over here in, in three days. But not stuff from Fukushima, Dana. You freaking fear monger. You're just a fear monger, Dana. Yeah. Well, that, that's not true. You, you can't have a conversation about nuclear without sounding like a fear monger. I mean, how can you get that creature right there? How do you do that? How do you say, oh, that somehow, magically, possibly, some way or another is inside of that. Right? And when you show you the videos of the pool and you search up to the roof, it, it pans up to the roof. These are the pictures. Huh? Huh? No, but Dana, you photoshopped all those pictures, Dana. You just hate nuclear. No, I hate something that kills the Pacific Ocean and leaves the whole planet looking like that. Ultimately, because you can't stop the chain reaction. But I mean, they're telling you it looks like that on the inside. Please. So you know something's real bad here when they're telling you that. Absorbed doses of radiation iodine 132 was 10 times higher than the 131. Just saying. The 133 was likely a major contributor because there was 30 times more 133 for every 131 you heard about. Right? There's 20 million in a liter according to Simon Fraser University, British Columbia, Canada. You think that stuff is all, all going to turn to fairy dust? Well, guess again, because the 129 lasts is for... You bet you can't guess it. I'm betting you can't guess how long that lasts for. I know. I'm going to tell you. Okay, I'm just going to leave you guess until the next time. Oh, I can't do that to you. It's 15.7 million years. Oh, that's right, too. I got the headline right there. Sue me. 131 ratio is uh, 31, 129s to every 131. It's a significant constitute of the fallout. Okay. All right. Okay, Dana. What's the point you're trying to make, Dana? Just freaking make it, Dana. Okay, there it is. You only got six minutes to make your point, Dana. Nothing you said so far makes any sense, Dana. Okay, give me a second. I got to finish my smoke without the 7,000 chemicals. Stop harassing me already. Okay, you're not harassing me. Dr. Raymond Gilmede, Dr. Death for Beagle Dogs and Beagle Puppies from Loveless Respiratory Research Institute in New Mexico. He got the 2001 uh, Scientist Achievement Award. And what did he get that for? Oh, I don't know, maybe. Killing big old dogs and big old puppies. Models of compounds in dogs. Although little use is being made. I smurfed that up already, did I? Oh, the pet that I got here. Okay, although little use is currently being made of purified curium. Because little information are a major byproduct. So what you're talking about there is curium is a major byproduct. And that when he studied plutonium in dioxide and americium in dogs, the studies in 144 dogs, um, they all died. Every one of them. There's a better way to put it. Starting after about three years, 90 of them were dead. Uh, 46 had tumors, uh, lung tumors. Liver tumors were found in 20 dogs. Tumors in three, blah, blah, blah. I got to fix that at some point. But anyway, Dr. Rim Gilmetty, and I know everybody's out there saying, yeah, Dana, so what? The ocean's dead. They're out there saying, hey, it's dead, and everybody's just like, <laughs> I'm going to send that to somebody. Don't give a fuck. <coughs> Well, curium, see, the radiative fuel rods are producing more curium than they are cesium and all their daughters and iodine and all their daughters. So curium is, is a, what man made, is like, it's like plutonium, the way it reacts, like Dr. Raymond Gilmetti's studies had showed on beagle dogs and beagle puppies. They performed the same way, but there was... It wasn't good for blowing up things, like bombs, like plutonium is. Or it wasn't good for making directed energy weapons. Or maybe it is. 
but it was definitely good for killing beagle dogs and beagle puppies. And so that Woods Hole in Uvic is out looking for season, they should be looking for curium. You know, iodine 129. And uranium from the chain reaction with the extra electrons, not the stuff that's in the drinking water uh, for millenniums, the natural stuff, but the stuff that has the extra electrons attached to it, the stuff that makes it into a dirty bomb, the stuff that means you got to put it on a nuclear holding site because there's no such thing as a repository anywhere on the planet for any country. It's being sequestered all the time in your body. And so, we covered that, we covered that. Let's get a few more headlines in before we call it a day. Finish out the story that I was going to tell you. So long radioactive uh, 15 million years for a half-life times 10. So these nuclear stacks, uh, not that one in particular, I guess, but what they are, what these plants do is they boil a million gallons a minute. So they're in a, that's 16 million glasses of water, salt water. Think about that for one second. Per minute for every nuclear plant, 440. Now multiply that by a billion, because that's how many creatures are in a glass of salt water. It was. The Pacific Ocean is dead. Carbon-free nuclear has killed the Pacific Ocean. But these nuclear power plants, studies show if you live within 15 miles of them, you're six times more likely to have uh, breast cancer. And if you're a child, you're 15 or 20 percent more likely to have leukemia if you live within 15 miles. And that doesn't mean 20 miles is safe. That doesn't mean 30 miles is safe. That doesn't mean 100 miles is safe. It just means the study showed within 15 miles. And so they boil a million gallons a minute. Each glass got a billion creatures, all the eggs and larvae. And so look at think about the carbon that's creating. But think about the fact that it killed the Pacific Ocean. Think about the fact that we got to deal with it. And that, you know, like four million beckles in a square meter where a child was stood up in a major city. Most of Japan experienced that. No, it didn't come from iodine-131. Or cesium, it came from curium. But they couldn't tell because they were looking for iodine. You need 2,000 Geiger counters calibrated to 2,000 isotopes to work it out. And so nuclear is a big cash cow. And it's just you're going over the cliff. And nuclear, going nuclear fission is what you're doing if you're going fission. And that, hey, we got four melter reactors. And that I wish all nuclear scientists were right there stood up when that went off. And that we are not going to evolve into what they want us to. We're going to evolve into not looking over there. Fool you, didn't we? That's not happening to us. We're not going to buy into it. We're not going to accept that it's carbon free. We're not going to. We're going to scream and yell at them in their faces till the end of time. We're not going to sit around with our heads up our asses. We're not going to allow these people to do any other jobs outside of clean up the mess they already created before it's too late. So I'll come over and say hi to everybody. Hugs for everybody. Let me get rid of that stuff. Uh, I'm Dana Dern for it, the nuclear proctologist org, And you can find these live streams six days a week, 10.30 a.m. Pacific Canada time at livestream.com. Type in Dana Dern for you'll see my pictures show up as you type in the name. So good day, everybody. And let me make that a bit bigger. Hi, David. Thanks for coming back, buddy. Glad to see you. My apologies. If I can find a comment section, I would, I could. Um, and so that was David. Yeah, you're welcome, David. David was there. I've seen him anyway, but whatever. Sean again. I can't get everybody. Stay strong. We need you. You scream, you scream. Terry Ann. Sean again, Sylvia, Amthurst, Aquarius, Jim, David, there you go. Yeah, much respect, David. You take care, buddy. Candace, I scream, you scream. Amthurst, Sean again, everybody. Sylvia, Jim, James. Yeah, you can see how difficult it is to do that. <laughs> and it's okay, too. Take care, Chuck. Candace, everybody else. We'll see you tomorrow. Hugs for everybody. Once again. Dana Durnford, the nuclear proctologist.org. And you can find these videos live streams at 
YouTube also at Beautiful Girl by Dana, where I repost them after these shows at livestream.com. Take care, folks. We'll see everybody tomorrow. And once again, I'll try to put the streams up late at night, so then that way everybody can get fine before the show starts. Take care, folks.